Captain Ezra. Shalom, this is Officer Amasai. And this is 15 Minutes with the Captains. And what I want to go over today is a class, well, it's going to be a series. And this is going to be called The Genius of Israel. The Genius of Israel. Because one thing when you read the scriptures, you know, once we were going to be destroyed, we would lose all that connection to our ancestors. We would lose connection to our history. And through that, us not knowing who we are, are is another way that they was able to destroy us. So we kind of got to build that back and understand who we are and who we've been throughout the history. So let's start in the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 11. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh -huh. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. So he would have to make this ark. So he had to make the ark. This is not a small task. Like, we had brothers and sisters go down to Kentucky where they got the ark experience, and they saw a real-life replica of what the ark looked like. And this thing is humongous. So he had to build this thing. He had to design it. He had to figure out how to make the rooms inside of it and all of this. And making a boat, or I don't even want to call it a boat because that's really knocking down the, what it is. Making this ark, and you've never even seen one before. You've never had, had to need for one because one, it never even rained on the earth at this point. And just to, the way it was done, like I saw a documentary on it, and they was talking about how the way he layered the wood was reminiscent of how they do it now. So it's like the way and the materials he used, they're like, how did he do this? And how did he make the tools to even make it? Because our people have always been on a genius level. We got to understand that. We come from this. This is what we come from is a genius level of understanding. And he used that to build the ark. But read, the, uh, read 15. Verse 15. Because when you say that pitch, you know, that just sounds oh, pitch. He had to make a concoction to make it watertight, and he used that. He was able to figure that out, and he made it. Go ahead. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, so and wait a minute. So if it's 300 cubits, that's like 400 and something feet. He made he made this something by himself. Well, I'm quite sure he had his servants or whoever, but designed this ship that's 400 and something feet. Most of us never been on a ship. Most of Dang Show ain't been on something that was 400 and something feet long. And 50, I drive semi trucks. That thing is like 70 something feet all together with the with the tractor and the trailer. It's like, no, 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 no. This was 450 feet long. You got you, you to be on a whole nother level to sit down and do this. To make the stuff he used. And that's why it's like when you look and you look at any of the, um, they had documentaries and different things on Exodus or different things that we did in history. Because we're the most studied people on the planet, whether you know it or not. We're the most studied people throughout history on this planet what we do, how we do it. They're always trying to figure out what we about. But they did a study trying to figure out how he made these things and they always doing that. They're like, how did he how was he able to bring how did he how was he able to make this wood this way? How was he able to chop this wood so precisely? And how was he able to line the like every step of the way they just they cannot figure it out. And they cannot even really replicate what he did. And that's what all they tie into technology and uh, and Esau walking around with a white, they still like with a white coat. They No, we don't really know how to replicate what they did. Right. And Cap, that's that's the size of, so you mentioned the tractor trailer. That's like six of them. Like, so that's, that's. In length. Uh, that's right, in a, length. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then it's 50 something feet wide. The tractor trailer only 10 feet. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like this is it's it's ridiculous what he did, right? So now let's go to first Kings six. Let's see some more though. 
some more inventions and things that the, our people have done over time. First Kings 6 and 1. This is the book of First Kings chapter 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was three score cubits, and breadth thereof twenty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits. Mm -hmm. And the porch before the temple of the house, twenty cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the house. And ten cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. And for the house he made windows of narrow lights. And against the wall of the house he built chambers round about against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. The nethermost chamber was five cubits broad, and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. For without in the wall of the house he made narrow rest round about that the beam should not be fastened in the walls of the house. So wait a minute. He put this together in a way where you don't have to nail it or screw it together. You're like, no, 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 no. I won't build this, but the way it's going to be built, it's going to be built, stacked upon each other like a Lego set or something. And it's like, yeah, I'm quite sure people know what a Lego set is. But matter of fact, I want you to pull up the video I got called Solomon's Temple. Let's take a look at that. The book of First Kings, chapter 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, and the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, and the month Ziph, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. And against the wall of the house he built chambers round about. Against the walls of the Stop. house. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. See the chambers on the side? See the side? You see the chambers? He say he built that so that it is not nailed to the house or it's not screwed in. It's none of that. It's just the way it's attached to it is so it's balanced and connected to everything else, but it's not screwed in. Everything is just kind of locked in the way it's built because the Most High gave an order. He didn't want you to use any tools or anything in the building of it. Go ahead. And against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. The nethermost chamber was five cubits broad, and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. For without in the wall of the house he made narrow rest round about, that the beam should not be fastened in the walls of the house. Mm -hmm. And the house, when it was in building was built of stone made oh, no, you can stop at uh six i just wanted to so but you see how this thing is put together and built this is they don't build stuff like this no more and actually they never built stuff like this any other nation no, nobody ever was able to replicate this like even you had herod's temple the, the one he built he wasn't able to replicate this and it, it was widely known that that temple was inferior to the one that was built in. Even the one that uh, Zerubbabel and them built. It's like, no, it's still like, it's not on the level of the one that Solomon built. It's a totally different level. So, I mean, and this thing is amazing. Just so you, we finish the video out. So this is the one he's talking about with the narrow windows. And then you know it had to be much more detailed, which we're going to get into another one. You're going to see the kind of detail that we put into the, our work when we did stuff. You don't see that today. All right, so that's enough of that. We can we can let that go. All right, so let's go to First Kings chapter 5 and verse 12. This is the book of First Kings chapter 5 and verse 12. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him, and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and they too made a league together. And King Solomon raised a levy out of all Israel, and the levy was 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month by courses. 
a month they were in Lebanon and two months at home. And Adonai, Adonai Aram was over the levy. So wait a minute. So Solomon invented shifts. He invented work shifts. I mean, that didn't exist. He said, no, what we're going to do is I'm going to take 10,000 men, send them out. They work for a month straight. And I got these other 20,000 men that's sitting back, and they're they not working. They're relaxing right now. And then when you come back after your month, another one of these 10, they go out for a month. So guess what you got about to get? Two months of rest. I mean, we need that again right now. Right. I go. I'm telling you, I go to work right now. Work. All right, you got to work a month. All right, work a month. But what did you? I get off two months. Cool. I'm. Not, I'm with that. I'm with that. And it's not. You know, we're not doing 24 hour a day working. Right. No, you working regular. Like, yeah, right, you started working. You know, maybe when it got a little light, you started working. All right, you're shipped over. You got you something to eat. Whatever, whatever. You right. it was done. But you do that for a month, and you get two months off. See what I'm saying? We got to go back to our stuff. We got to go back to the way we get down. Mm -hmm. Not this this system they got us. You go to work every single day, every single day. Get up. You up early in the morning. You get one day off maybe. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you get two. Right. No, 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 no. You're like, no, no. You work for a month with me, you're going to get two months off. Right. Oh, my goodness. See, this is why we got to get back. This is why our people are genius. You know what I mean? This thing right. is genius what he invented. So now let's go to let's see how this uh, Queen of Sheba thought about when she saw the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go to chapter ten and verse one. This is the book of First Kings, chapter ten and verse one. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. So that means his genius was not just local. That means that everybody that bumped into him, they saw the genius of him, and they went and talked about it in their own lands. They said, wait a minute. Y'all, you know about Solomon? No, you don't know about Solomon? You don't know about Solomon? You got to get over there. You got to get over to Israel. You got to see what he got going on. We never seen no stuff like this. I mean, it's spreading. Go ahead. Verse 2. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him all that was in her heart. See, we can't skip that part. She came with a very great train. I mean, she came with servants. She came with all these spices and gold. And it looks like something that might be, you know, right. really good. Mm -hmm. Until she saw what Solomon had going on. It was like, oh, snap. Right. That's a whole nother level. She's a queen. She coming up like, yeah, you know, I'm rolling. This royal. I know about right. royalty. I, she thinks she understands what royalty is until she got there and saw Solomon. Read. Now let's see what happens. Verse 3. And Solomon told her all her questions that were not anything hid from the king. which That he was not. That was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. Mm -hmm. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. She gave up the ghost. She like, this is what royalty is supposed to be. Mm. She like, look at the way his servants is dressed. Look at the way they sit. Look at the order. Look at the way they bring his meat. Look at the way he go up into the temple. Look at this. Right. She on her service like, you see this? They're like, ain't you a queen? She like, no, I, no, I guess not. Look at this. Right. She's like, I'm a servant. Do you see the way this royalty is supposed to be? So not only did he invent uh, uh, the Lego building set he, <laughs> that he did with the temple, not only did he invent shifts the way they should be, then he had messed around and he invented order. Right. He this is the one that set in place what royal order should be. Mm -hmm. And she had never seen it before, and she was a queen. She had no idea what royalty was supposed to look like until she came and saw Solomon. And when she seen that, she didn't have no more spirit in her. She like, oh, my goodness. I've been doing this all wrong. We got some stuff to work on when we get back over here to uh, uh, Ethiopia. Right. So go ahead. Verse 6. And she said to the king, 
It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Wait a minute. You got to imagine. You a queen. You royalty. And all oh, you keep hearing about, yeah, I know you the queen and everything, but shh, you seen Solomon. Right. She had to, I got to go see this for myself. People probably disrespecting you in your kingdom. They like, she like, put some respect on my name. They like, listen, you ain't seen Solomon. Right. I can't put no respect on your name. <laughs> Not after I've seen that. So it's like that that you just gotta imagine. But this is where we come from. And this is what we gotta understand that this is what we going back to. We're gonna be better than this. This right here, you think she gave up the ghost then, seeing that? Imagine when they see when we get the kingdom. Right. That's why I said our children will be known in the streets. They're gonna be like, No, that's such and such boy. Oh, that's such and such kid right there. They're gonna bow when they see your children. Why? Same thing we reading here. But with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. In black power, while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.